lesson from the man born blind. I think I'll only read through verse 7, even though we'll cover most of the chapter today. But let me just read to verse 7 because this, this is the content of the miracle itself. And then the rest is basically argument about related to the miracle. So let's look at the miracle itself first. John 9, verse 1 through 7. I'm reading from King James Version, New King James Version. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seen. Basically, that's the miracle. Uh, only in those seven, the rest of the chapter is argument related to it. And uh, testimony related to the miracle and uh, acceptance and rejection, that kind of thing. So we'll look at that. And the theme over these next probably three messages is uh, true vision and true blindness. Who is really blind in the story and who can really see? That's the important uh, point here, okay? <clears throat> this blind man is the first known person that was thrown out of the synagogue because he chose to follow Jesus. Uh, right at the end of this section in the message today is verse 34. And it says they answered, you are completely born in your sins and are, are you teaching us? And they cast him out. Now, uh, according to the text, they had already planned and already uh, planned that anyone that confessed that Jesus was the Messiah would be thrown out of the synagogue. Now, the synagogue was the Jewish place of worship. Uh, it was where they gathered. It was the center of the whole community. It was where they made decisions were made. And the uh, uh, synagogue uh, leaders and the uh, uh, Pharisees and teachers that were part of that synagogue were very powerful people in the community. And so the synagogue was very important. It's where the family was held together. It's where the whole community would come together to make decisions. They would listen in the synagogue to the reading of the prophets and of Moses and the writings, the Old Testament basically. And it was in the synagogue that uh, uh, the whole community was there. They could also make judgments based on people who had broken the law or broken uh, the law meaning uh, Moses' law those that had broken Moses' law, they could make judgments in the synagogue. Very interesting because the first uh, Christians that believed the message of Jesus came from the synagogue because of their connection to the Old Testament and the, Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies. So for the leaders to say, Anyone that professes Jesus as Messiah will be thrown out of the synagogue. That was their plan already. And so by the end of this whole argument here about this miracle, this man is sent out of the synagogue. It would affect him and his whole family. Um, that's why in the story you see the parents are very careful how they answer the uh, Pharisees because they don't want to be thrown out of the synagogue. And so they say he's old enough he can answer himself. 
You know, he's a, he's a grown man. He can tell you what happened. So they kind of stayed away from getting in the middle of the story. So the synagogue's important here. This is the first recorded uh, uh, event of someone that was thrown out of the synagogue because of their belief in Jesus. Now, it, it's ironic, too, because he hasn't even been saved yet, and he's thrown out of the synagogue. Later in the story, by the end of the chapter, he's saved, it appears. But at this point, he's not. And so when he's thrown out of the synagogue, he's not even saved yet. Jesus had said in John 16, if you can turn over there, he mentioned this, uh, this type of persecution, this throwing out of the synagogue persecution. John 16, verse 1 and 2. When preparing his disciples for the coming persecution, their sufferings and rejection from others, from the community, here's what Jesus said. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think he offers God service. So it was in the synagogue that they believed God was speaking to them through the scriptures and through the law and through the prophets. And so it was a very, very serious thing, but it would also be the center of persecution at first for the believers. So here, Jesus said, and this is after the fact, of course, that uh, they would be thrown out. His disciples would be thrown out of the synagogue. You know, there was a struggle in the early days of Christianity, a struggle between the Jewish Christians and the non-Jewish Christians. And it was very important in the Bible that this was settled. Acts chapter 15 settled the issue. It was basically, when you were saved, do you have to become a Jew in order to be saved? Okay? And that was, it. That was for those that believed in Jesus Christ. And so the, the New Testament had to settle that. The early apostles had to discuss this. The early church had a big discussion about it. And it's all related to the synagogue and the power of the synagogue and Moses' law. But when it came down to it, it was law and grace salvation. Are we saved by keeping the law or are we saved by grace? So that kind of, that's what it came down to. Well, it was very difficult for the religious leaders to accept the new way of Jesus. And there's uh, several reasons, and we'll look at some of that. Also in John 9, I want to make this statement in introduction. It is nearly impossible to convince people who have made up their mind to be unconvinced. Okay, and here, this is the quote. Impossible to convince those who have resolved to remain unconvinced. Convinced means to accept the idea of Jesus Christ. Okay, so, and even today, this is still an issue. If a person has made up their mind, they're going to resist, 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 resist. It's very difficult to convince them with an intellectual argument. Intellectual argument is, is not a bad thing. We should argue for things. However, we have to realize that is incomplete. Intellectual argument, we're talking about spiritual salvation. And so it's very difficult for those intellectually that have made up their mind to resist, 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 to change their mind. It's not impossible. People do it all the time, but it's very difficult. And when you add the religious, the religion into it, it makes the mix very hard 
to, uh, to change the way people think. So we have to be patient with our relatives, friends, and people we work with that do not know God. We have to be patient with them because everybody has their own struggles as far as intellectual argument, as far as religious background. And so I think we find that here in this part of the story once again because the Pharisees had already made up their mind if anyone says Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, he'll be thrown out of the synagogue. They've already made up their mind. And it's interesting, it doesn't seem to bother the blind man. He's okay with that. By the end of the story, because he was blind, but now he can see. So it, he's, he's okay with the persecution. Spiritually speaking, from this story of the blind man. We are all born blind. This is spiritually speaking. Okay? Meaning we're born in our sins. We all have that issue to deal with. And so in, in the story we have a physically blind man. But we see people who are spiritually blind. In, in uh, John 9. Now here's the truth of the gospel. We are healed of our blindness by salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. In verse 25 of the story, the testimony of the blind man, he answered and said, whether he, referring to Jesus, whether Jesus is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know, I was blind and now I see. All he knew is what Jesus had done for him. That's all he knew. It was an incomplete, uh, incomplete uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now by the end of the chapter, he gets a full knowledge. But at this point, it's incomplete. But here's the point. His experience of Jesus Christ was his testimony. No one could change that or take it away from him. Think about your experience of Jesus Christ. No one can change that. If you are like the blind man spiritually, you can say, I was blind. I was lost in my sin. I was 